Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be making another video today. Um, as always, I would like to start off by saying thank you for all the support in the last video. Um, that one did even better than the other video, which did better than that video, and then so on. But um, uh, yeah, uh, not possible without you guys, so I want to thank you for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get into this video. So, the main crux of this video is going to be the Helminth, and my major problem with it. And essentially it boils down to, um, character has bad ability, so let's get rid of said bad ability for a better ability, whether, you know, that's Eclipse for damage, or Roar, you know, Nourish, whatever. Basically what's up happening is that you're just going to take one ability and slap it on to another because you think that other ability is either bad or is not as good as an ability that already exists. And that has to do with two things. It's uh, my issue with a band-aid fix, is what I like to refer to it, um, where you're basically, uh, you are, and also the devs, admit there is a problem, but instead of fixing that problem, we will just give you the tools to circumvent it altogether. Um, and, you know, it's like you see a car crash on the road and instead of you know like making sure the people in the car crash are all right you know like getting all that shit taken care of now we'll just make another road to go around them and uh like it becomes like a memorial that you just drive past every now and then um and that's how i feel about helminth um do i think it's fine that it's in the game yes i i mean i don't think there's any reason to get rid of it especially when you have like you know a giant the, the amount of people who abuse Gloom. Um, and I've also bought into this. I'm playing my Haro here. Haro is known for having the best kit in the game where like all of his abilities synergize. And if you see right here, I have Gloom on one of his abilities. I know. Shameful. Um, and it's actually, it's horrible. I, I would like to undo this. I, I would. Uh, this is this is horrible. I don't like it. Um, so yeah, there is that. But with all that being said though, um, I don't like Helminth purely because, as I've mentioned, you are basically admitting that there is a problem with this ability, or that this ability isn't as a isn't as good as another ability. For example, so basically, if you compare Larva to Air Burst, you tend to get this problem where it's one or the other, and essentially people use them for the same ability as a grouping for you know whatever, but. The fact that there's two of these, and you get the option between them is nice, but why not just have that built into a character's kit? And I'm not saying this ability needs to be built into that character's kit, I'm saying that some type of grouping ability that's specific to that character should be in their kit. And this is where the main crux of the video comes from. And uh, so let me talk about abilities that are just inferior to basically what their sub -zoom counterparts are. And uh, you will start to notice a trend. So, here we are with Frost. You know, the uh, iconic, right? I made a video about rework concept for him. But I want to talk about his subzoom ability, right? Ice Wave. This is ass. There's a reason why nobody uses it. And people will usually subzoom something on here that can uh, heal him. Or, you know, give him, you know, energy for returns. So, say, you know, um, Dispensary, for example usually goes here for like a lot of builds and that's because he has no way to get energy back and his cost on everything is usually pretty high for whatever reason so how do we circumvent that well we just get rid of the ability especially you know it's already bad and there's no reason to use it that's a problem so here we are with necros he has Soul Punch. Soul Punch is the ability that everybody gets rid of. Even though the rest of his kit is pretty solid. Soul Punch is, you know, the black sheep of his kit. And, uh, nobody uses it because it does piss poor damage. Um, the range on it, for some reason, is really good. Like, I've, I've never understood that. It's really good. Um, and it has, you know, a decent drain. Uh, I mean, it's a bit expensive for what it is, but, you know, that's just how it is. So, what people end up doing is they get rid of this, uh, what I would recommend, if you're shield gating, you'd use Condemn, if you're health tanking with him, you use Reeve. Um, but, 
what ends up happening a lot of times is that you have to remember that uh he has no way to really heal himself outside of you know the drops from desecrate and what i would like to see is this be this get some type of lifesteal uh capability for him and his shadows if it did that this would actually be a useful ability because the only way to heal your shadows currently is with your four now you could use arcane pulse i use that for my build but the idea of being able to use his abilities is the the key point here why get rid of something when i have the the actual an actual the viable reason to keep it on to the next character so here's my garuda i love this character i think she's one of the most fun frames in the game um she's definitely one of my most played but she has a problem and it's blood altar why is blood altar in the game well it's a healing ability it has an aoe heal and it heals your allies and all the other shit however who cares um because it does nothing to the enemy outside of being able to stun basically one guy so he can't move until they die or you get rid of the altar uh which is cool but she does not have the health necessary to health tank even if you're running the you know the dread ward you know invulnerability stuff it does not matter it she doesn't have the health to health tank especially when you have bloodletting which is where she gets most of her energy from she does not have the health and she doesn't have a good cc you can maybe argue you know her talents could you know stun them for however long they stun for but that's not very long so she has no way to really like health tank even though you want to treat her as a health tank she has no way to cc especially if you decide to use her uh talons which her talons are extremely strong uh do not sleep on garuda's talons but um she she's bad or at least this ability is this ability is dog shit now there's maybe other reasons why you'd run this on a different character but because if you're going to play a melee Garuda, then you are constantly moving, having to advance toward your enemy. And uh, you can only block damage from Dread Ward from the front. And to be honest, I don't like the, uh, or I don't like Dread Ward's passive here, where like you get the augment for it and, you know, it makes you invulnerable. Because now it doesn't, it doesn't actually make you invulnerable, it just makes you deathless, meaning you can't die. You'll still lose health, but you can't die. The, the, there was a massive nerf to that augment um, but the mirror itself has another condition the insta kill threshold is retarded uh, I'm going to be completely honest I would like to see that get removed and just scale it based off the like heavy damage of your uh, Garuda's talons because if you did that then yeah you could potentially one shot people with this and uh, it become viable but whatever um, but yeah blood altar is the problem now let's show the you know alternative here and of course it's gloom it's always gloom it's all it always be gloom because it does exactly what blood talons or uh blood altar does okay but better it cc's them they they can hardly move i mean with my build they're 90 percent slow that means they basically can't do anything 12 percent life steal um when you're using you know weapons that hit really hard or just her talons in general uh which will do you know like six million on a crit that's all your health back regardless of you know what is going on if you have your dread mirror up that means you take you know the the full effect of taking all that frontal damage while getting hurt and gloom so whoever's around you really can't keep up to shoot you or whatever to hurt you so yeah it's gloom gloom is literally the better version of blood altar in every single way it slows them so it has a cc component it heals you which is what she needs that's what her uh, that's what the original ability did this or uh, the original ability did to this and most importantly it allows her to move so why wouldn't i use gloom and last but not least we have corvex i chose corvex for an interesting reason because there is this idea that all the newer frames who come out are better than the old ones and i think on average they tend to be they, they have a more like rounded kit it's not just oh their first ability is the weaker version of their fourth and you know their their second and third ability are like utilities and whatever this is you know like the complete package you know we have basically you know the uh the zhongli you know totems from genshin impact uh we have uh, some doom walls or some shit i don't know like this 
I mean, they're cool, but they're not really good. Um, basically, rolling guard without the invulnerability. Uh, and then we have Wisp's Force, except it actually does damage and is good. Um, <laughs> but obviously, what ends up happening is even with a kit like this, overall, I think he has a really good kit. I, I think it all flows together uh, very well. Like how his one will be boosted if you know you use containment wall near it, or that his uh, three will be increased by doing damage with his other abilities. Like there's good synergy in here. But is it worth keeping them? And for example, say if you ran his three and his two, they were the same ability. You pop the wall, and then you know, say for the number of enemies you were to hit or whatever, gave you your uh, you know your domestic guard or whatever. Did I say domestic? That's disometric. For <laughs> I read that completely wrong. But um, anyways, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. But yeah, usually one of these two abilities go, um, because there's better grouping abilities, so why keep that? Um, and why do I need to worry about having Rolling Guard when I could just have Rolling Guard? That's kind of how most people view this. The only benefit this really brings is that, you know, it allows you to use it for your teammates, so they don't have to worry about status effects, which is nice, but, you know, it's not like this actually gives him more armor. You know, if it was like every, you know, one, like, guard thing he got was like 100 or 200 armor or whatever then yeah that would be really cool or maybe it scales in armor and that's how you got your armor from it I don't know but the point is you know they don't really do anything and you will get rid of them you'll probably get rid of this for nourish something to heal you or at the very least something like that uh, and you'll probably get rid of this for another grouping ability uh, one that can you know actually pull people together and not just like kind of slam them together because uh, unless it's got like an armor strip or something to it, there's this is pretty bad. Like objectively, this is a this is a really bad grouping ability. Because it's whatever's in front of you in a straight line, basically, which you're just making into a smaller line uh, to use your four. Which you know, using it in tandem with your four isn't a problem, but that's a lot of energy drain. That is a lot of energy drain just to use two abilities. Like, so yeah, you usually get rid of it, and why wouldn't you, right? Um, and that's kind of the problem. Uh, instead of like fixing these problems that already you know exist uh, we'll just get rid of it for another thing and that's the whole crux of this video uh, and that's why I don't like helmet uh, I don't think helmet needs to be removed it should be there as an alternative option not as in like best in slot throw nourish throw you know eclipse roar whatever in here uh, and that's kind of how it is now so uh, anyways uh, I want to thank you all for watching uh, and this is this video was for that one guy in my comment section who said he wanted a helmet video, so we got the helmet video. Um, I don't think helmet is inherently bad for the game. I just think how it's used as like the end-all be-all to fixing a fucking Warframe's problems is the issue. Because instead of getting, you know, tweaking, you know, say this ability to give you armor, or, you know, maybe fixing this so that it does some armor strip for the enemies caught inside of it, or um, something, we're just gonna leave it at is as is, and maybe later down the line we get an augment to uh, to actually overcome the shortcomings that these abilities already have, and that's kind of my issue. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. As I said, um, you guys are killing it with the uh, you know the views and the subscriptions. Uh, I'm loving that. I love you guys. Kind of. I don't know any of you really personally, anyways. But uh, thanks for watching.